Right then, so I'm hoping you can work out by now, looking at that, that we are going to do a project based on the architect Norman Foster. Norman Foster, one of the most famous British architects um, of all time, I suppose. Postmodern, started um, kind of becoming big in the architecture world in the kind of 80s. Uh, has done loads of loads and loads of um, famous projects. Uh, what I would like you to do is try and watch these videos. This first video is quite long. It's about 20 minutes long. Uh, but a good video to watch if you're interested. You don't have to watch it all. You can flick through it. Uh, important video to definitely watch is the top five Norman Foster projects. It goes through his most famous buildings, uh, structures. Definitely have a look at that. Underneath, I've embedded his website. So you can look at his website, uh, and on his website has all of the different projects. If you click on projects, you can go through and you can have a look at all these different projects. Underneath, in case you ever get lost with this project, I've given you the full booklet here that we're going to go back to in a minute. I've also given you exemplars of all of the things we're going to do in this project. So these are all exemplar bits of work for that type of project. They're obviously not Norman Foster based. These are just things taken off old um, coursework projects. And I've also given you some videos about designing. So when we get to our designing work, which is in our next lesson, you need to be looking at these videos. Okay. But what we're going to do today is the task analysis. So there is the exemplar for the task analysis. That is what you are going to produce. Right. So let's get started with this project. The first thing we want to do is think about a task analysis. Now, a task analysis uh, or a mind map or an exploration or a context exploration is how we would start any design project. There's really no way of getting around it because it's the way that you can explore uh, and put down and write down all of your ideas, thoughts, influences, uh, inspiration, uh, in this case from Norman Foster. Now, what we're going to do as a project is create a lighting project, right? So we're going to think about lighting. It could be, you could be designing a table lamp, a wall lamp, a hanging lamp. It could be a handheld lamp. It could be lighting to go in the garden. I don't mind, but it's just a lighting solution, okay? And I want to be based on the work of Norman Foster. Now, to create a task analysis, I think about four main issues. I think about putting down four main issues. Now you can see here, I've done them in red. So my four main issues when I'm thinking about Norman Foster is bridges and cantilevers. He does a lot of work on bridges and cantilevers. You can see his two famous bridges here. That's the Millennium Bridge in Newcastle. Uh, and that is a bridge. I forget, it's, uh, I forget its name off the top of my head. Very famous though. <laughs> and it's in uh, France. You'll see it on the video. So I look at bridges and cantilevers. I look at spirals. He does a lot of work with spirals. Uh, you can see here that's the, the Gherkin in London. You might remember, recognize this one as the mayor's office uh, in London as well. He looks at overlapping shells quite a lot. So that's the outside of the mayor's office. Okay, here you can see overlapping shells here as well. And he also looks at geometric frames. So this kind of geometric frame structure, that's the inside of King's Cross. Okay, and this is an office block that he's done in London. Okay, so it looks at geometric frames. So for me, I thought of Norman Foster as these four types of architecture. You don't have to do it like that. You could look at his website, look at his project types and see that he does, well, he does cultural buildings. You see, that's the uh, British Museum. He does civic buildings. Okay, there's the, um, uh, that's the, the mayor's office in London. He does offices, he does transport and infrastructure, he does health and education, he's industrial and research. You could pick four of those as your four issues. So you could pick culture as one of them. You could have a look at culture and look at all of his different buildings, couldn't you? You could look at the Vatican Chapel here. You could look at the Norton Museum of Art, the Snowden Avery, the Inn Hubler Punt. Okay. So you could pick those four types of things, couldn't you? You could pick transport and infrastructure, education buildings, what was it, civic buildings, cultural buildings. And for each of those issues, then I just start to explore all of the main features. So for these overlapping shell buildings, I looked at fluid forms, organic aesthetics, organic means like from nature. I looked at concentric circles. Uh, in those overlapping shells, he has hidden slits of light, he has sharp 
pointed metallic objects. He has overlapping curved forms. So I'm just using that as a mind map or a way of just jotting down, writing down all of my thoughts based on the main issue. And I've just done that four times. Same for spirals, looked at curved and maybe a curved LED strip is something I could look at. Spirals are natural forms, random shapes hanging from the ceiling, perhaps. I'm just writing down all the things I've noticed from them and all of the maybe opportunities for designing. As well as my mind map, I've added in images just so that what I've written makes sense. When I've talked about overlapping shells, I've put down images of buildings of normal fosters that have overlapping shells. When I've talked about geometric frames, I've put down images of Norman Foster's buildings that have geometric frames just to make it make sense. And as a real extension task, what you could do and what I've done here is I've started doing a bit of designing. So I've just drawn very, very roughly, you know, very quick little sketches of maybe lighting ideas that just popped into my head when I was looking at these buildings and, and doing my mind map. Just quick little sketches and, and doodles just to think about, well, maybe I could use this funnel shape as a way of creating a, a, a lamp. Maybe I could use this spiral shape as a way of using an LED strip on a spiral. You know, maybe this cantilever shape is a good way of kind of creating a, a down-facing table lamp. Okay, so I just did some extra sketches. Now, you wouldn't have to do that. But what I do want you to do is create one page of a task analysis, the mind map is the most important thing with the images and some sketches if you could, that would be fantastic. Try and make it as detailed as you can, as presented as well as you can. Uh, your mind map can really concentrate on any aspect of Norman Foster's work. You can look at the different types of his work, the different types of his projects. You can look at the different elements of his work, like I've looked at the different kind of shapes and forms that he uses anything. The purpose of doing a task analysis is so that next lesson, when you start your designing work, you can use it for inspiration. You can use it to help you design. You think, oh, well, actually, I'm going to look at spirals, and here's some buildings that he's done with spirals. I can use that to inspire my designing. We will have um, a Google Meet lesson in your next lesson. So your second lesson, your second lesson after the assessment week, we'll do a Google Meet where we can look at some designing. I'll, I'll send a separate or I'll post um, a separate message on Google Classroom to let you know about that later.